This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to our Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Offlum. But before that, this video is brought to you by Optimus and Paul Nadon Jr. Thank you for being Farm Barons. So the Offlum 22 map can be found over at the farming simulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this is a PC only map. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to the idyllic Offlum in the middle of the beautiful Munsterland. Everything from an agricultural perspective is represented from small to large machines. Everything can be used. The courtyards are arranged accordingly. There is a small winding courtyard, but also large open courtyards. The landscape is rather flat with smaller hills and many ditches. This map has 119 fields, 11 meadows, 5 agricultural businesses, 2 biogas plants, 12 forest areas, custom textures, realistic stubble destruction, ditches and water holes fill up when it rains. This map is fill up when it rains. This map is prepared for the precision farming mod with a custom soil map. In addition, there are seasonal map objects, ammo dealer, and interesting and oddly enough, pumps and hoses is required. So the pumps and hoses BGAs are built into this map. If you do not have pumps and hoses, you will not be able to load this map up. So this may be the very first map that we have seen that is a pumps and hoses requirement. Now this map has a ton, an absolute ton of required mods. And one of them is not on the download page listing. So I'm gonna point that one out when we get to it because this is extremely important. If you wanna load this map up on a multiplayer server that you know all of the mods that are gonna be required because the multiplayer server does not give you a good error message if you do not have all those mods loaded when you try to load the map. We are gonna need the big white cow barn, the composite machine sheds, cow shed three plus zero, cow shed three plus three, cow shed pack, double rod mat fence pack, Dutch contractor shed, Dutch pig shed, Dutch shed pack, EU factories, farmhouse package volume two, the fuel station, the GDR grain hall, and this is the one that is not listed in the download. No, sorry. I'm not, sorry, it looks similar to this. That's not it. It's coming up. German grain mill. We then have the old cow shed, the old cow shed. Repeated. Old farm package, old manure heat package, old wood sheds, big sheds, placeable silos, shelter, silo plate, small bunker silo, small modular bunker silo pack, system hall. That's the one. System hall is the one that is not on the download listing. But if you do try to load this map up in single player without it, it will prompt you to download it. If you try to load this map up in multiplayer without it, you're just going to get a message saying, not all mods are available. Thanks. No, it's not going to tell you which one. So you need to know. System hall. VDI large storage halls, washing station, and the wolf system hall. Which looks an awful lot like system hall. Which looks somewhat like the GDR Grain Hall. any rate, with all of those required mods done, we're also going to be making use of the mods we typically use when looking at maps. That is additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, as well as straw harvest. I will tell you, if you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, the farms are built out exactly how you're going to see them here in new farmer mode. In addition, you do have starting machinery in all play modes, and you do not own any land in those alternate game modes. I did load this map up with a low-powered system with integrated graphics, and I did find that the system ran fairly well, was a little bit low when we were around some of the more building built-up areas of the farms, but overall frames were fairly good we load into the map for the very first time we do start here at the main starting farm and let's go ahead and take a look at that pda this is a standard size map and we do have all our crops nope sorry we do not we are actually missing cotton grapes olives and sugarcane 
So there are four crops that are base game that have been excluded from this map. But we do have two crops that have been added, green rye and field grass. Also, if you do have the premium expansion loaded, you do have your red beets, carrots, and parsnips. With respect to the farmland screen, we start out by owning farmland ID 250. That is the main starting farm. And Wowzer, that can be bought in any alternate game mode for $2.8 million. Clearly, you need to start this map up in new farmer mode because, well, that is extremely, extremely expensive. In addition to the main starting farm at Farmland ID 250, there is access to an arable farm at Farmland ID 246 for $422,000. We have a sheep and cow farm at Farmland ID 252 for $2.4 million. We have a cow and BGA farm at 253 for $2.5 million. Farmland ID 247 is a cow and sheep farm. That is going to be $4.6 million. Farmland ID 248 is a biogas plant at $4 million. Farmland ID 249 is a cow and BGA for $249 million. So these things are exceedingly exceedingly expensive it's going to take a look at our farmland at least screen this is going to show us all of the viable farmlands how large those are if those farmlands include any field or fields what is included then lastly how much is that farmland going to cost us we're then going to be able to cross-reference this with the field calculator screen which is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field Here we see we have fields that are less than one hectare in size, all the way up to, so far we've seen fields that are six hectares. So a nice array, here we have field 88 at eight hectares in size. Nice array of various field sizes. Again, map's gonna be ideal probably for medium to medium large machinery. It's all gonna depend on how big the roads are and how easy it is to get out of the shop. We do have a custom crop counter available here on this map. Here we have our green rye and our field grass. Now, when we take a look at our prices screen, we do have the ability to sell all the base game crops that are available to us on this map. Of course, remember grapes, olives, sugarcane, and cotton have been excluded. So the fact that we can't sell grapes, olives, or cotton really doesn't matter because we cannot grow them. We do have the ability to sell eggs, but we do not have the ability to sell wool, which is rather disturbing because we do have sheep on the map. So if you do want to do anything with your wool, you will need to put down a sell point or a production point. We do have the ability to sell our milk as well as our silage, hay straw, and grass. Now, there is a very interesting story with respect to base game productions. In fact, the only base game production that we can sell is sugar. None of the other productions are available. Isn't, isn't that interesting because we have a dairy on the map? Yeah, we have a dairy on the map. We have a grain mill on the map. But all we can sell as far as productions is sugar. So if you're going to be owning the grain mills or the dairy, well, you need to put down your own sell point to do something with the product of those productions. We do have the ability to, nope, do not have the ability to buy a bulk lime, nor do we have the ability to sell our stones. Oddly enough, we also don't have the ability to sell our green rye or field grass. So I'm not really sure what green rye or field grass are for, but clearly they're not a sellable crop. With respect to the platinum expansion, of course, we do not have the ability to sell any of the platinum expansion production items. Why would we? After all, we can't even sell our base game stuff that we can make. We do have the ability of selling our platinum, sorry, our premium expansion productions because they're basically coded to be accepted anywhere that potatoes are accepted. If you are playing with pumps and hoses, oddly enough, since pumps and hoses is a required DLC, we can't sell separated manure either. We do have the ability of getting rid of our hay and straw pellets, thankfully, if we are playing with straw harvest. Now, with respect to our 
vehicle overview we do start out with a decent listing of starting machinery it is all owned none of it is leased we do have a cow barn two pig styes well, three pig styes and two cow barns at the main starting farm we do have contracts available we do have several fermenters and various things that are available again that are part of the pumps and hoses dlc now this says that we have 100 element creek collectibles but we do not we do not have 100 collectibles on this map. I did do a hunt and attempted to show all collectibles on the map with the console command and nothing popped up. Let's go ahead and take a look at that starting fleet. We started with the Fence Fabric 515C small tractor as well as the John Deere 7810 medium tractor. We have a top liner 4090H harvester that is paired up with the top liner 4090H harvester header. And then we have our 4090H header trailer. We have the Karat 140TD trailer, as well as the TMS2 3000 or 300D mulcher. We have the POV 5XL plow, as well as the Terrino 3FX cultivator. For the Nordstein HK25 NS 3030 power harrow and cedar combination, the Mega 1200L fertilizer and herbicide sprayer. We have the ZATS 3200 solid fertilizer spreader as well as the TA-12050 Power Spread Plus Manure Spreader and the Polysys 1550 Slurry Spreader. We have the GMD-4411 Side Mower and the F-240 Front Mower. We have the GF-8712 Tether and the Semez Z2840H Wind Rower. We have the Faro 4010D Forage Wagon, as well as the Silo King TMR Mixer. And we have the Duval Duvalsdorf silage leveler as well as the silage roller silage compaction roller we have the q4m of front loader arms for the front loader we have a fork with grapple and we have 1150 kilogram front weight 900 kilogram front weight in a 600 kilogram front weight with respect to mods and dlcs this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements now let's go ahead and jump back here because i just reminded myself that we once again fail to take a look at the custom soil map so let's go ahead and see how that is being applied to these fields now you can see we have quite an interesting custom soil map with the predominant soil type being loam and then sandy loam throughout the map let's go ahead and take a look at our starting farm We do have our farmhouse with our sleep trigger. <laughs> Lots of sheds, and I will tell you that with respect to what can be sold. A lot of these buildings can be sold, but what cannot be sold is a heck of a lot of decorative elements. Here we have our milk trigger. We have our cow drop-off point here for 60 cows in this building. do have our food and straw trigger. We have our slurry point around this side. We can sell the gate and the fences around this farm. These bales, for example, are part of the deco elements that will remain. You'll also find some vines that will and will not be sold with particular buildings. This area of deco also is going to end up remaining, as well as this stack of pallets, just to give you a couple examples. We have two pull-through silage bunkers, and these tarps that are draped over the bunker walls, they're going to remain, but the bunkers are going to go away. This is going to make this area rather interesting visually. We have our slurry point for this cow shed. There were food and straw triggers inside of here. There were cow delivery point for 80 cows. And our milk trigger. The liquid slurry storage tank. Again, more decorative elements that are going to remain. 
And the vines, for example, on this building, they remain when you sell the building. So I really would not overly recommend customizing the buildings on this farm or the other farms, for example, because there's just a plethora of things that will not go away. We've got our slurry point here. We have 250 pigs in this facility. We have our food trough. And then we have another one of the same building, slurry, food, and pig. This one's a little smaller, 170 pigs. And then we have our final pig area for another 300 in this shed. And we have the food and flurry, flurry, sorry, on this side of the shed. And that is pretty much the starting farm area. Again, as I said, a lot of the deco elements here are going to be permanently a part of the map, even if you sell the buildings. And for that, I would say highly recommend that you not try to customize these farms because I think you're just going to inevitably end up in a bit of frustration. Now I've gone ahead and purchased a lot of the additional farms. So as we do our flyover, which I think is what we're going to do for this map, we're not going to drive around because honestly, other than these farms, there's a shop trigger, there's an animal trigger, there's a couple productions and a sell point. There really isn't much worth driving to aside from these farm areas, which we'll take a look at as we kind of fly around. I want to go ahead and buy this. I feel this is going to be our second grain mill, and it is indeed. So typically, right, you would have your interactive icon. You come up here and buy the grain mill. But this one, you're going to have to buy the land. It's going to be at farmland ID 251. Let's just double check that. Yep, 251. So we have our interactive icon. We have our dump point, And then we have our pallet spawn point on this side of the building. I also purchased some farmland that had some windmills on it. Typically on these types of maps, we will be able to sell the windmills, but that is not the case with this one. These windmills appear to be permanently embedded in the map. Down here to the south, we do have that arable farm, which I mentioned. This arable farm does not have a farmhouse sleep trigger, but it does have a farmhouse located right there. We've got machine sheds. And some more machine sheds here. We do have a silo storage for seed, lime, and fertilizer, as well as a diesel fuel tank. Just down from that, we have then a second grain mill, as well as a dairy. So we have our grain mill located right here. We have our dump point, interactive icon, and pallet spawn point. And here we have our dairy, dump point, interactive icon, and pallet spawn point. And in fact, other than the BGA, that's all the production. Those two grain mills and the dairy. As we continue to make our way across the southern edge of the map to the west, we have our biogas plant, which is located right here. And it is, again, the Pumps and Hoses BGA. Several of these elements can be sold. All the Pumps and Hoses items can be sold. The Deco elements and the bunkers, they are going to remain. If you're not familiar with the Pumps and Hoses DLC, I do have a multi-part video series dedicated to the Pumps and Hoses DLC. I believe it is four parts explaining each and every aspect of that DLC. It's well worth checking out if you are not familiar or well worth checking out if you just need a refresher. Here we have a pumps and hoses flurry storage tank. And this is going to be the 
cow and sheep farm. So we have our slurry point there. I believe this is our sheep building. 15 sheep in here. We do have our food at dump as well. Implement storage, and I'm not necessarily seeing, I'm going to still keep looking, but I'm not necessarily seeing the area for the wool to spawn. This is likely going to be our milk point for this cow shed. Our food dump point. Our slurry point. 140 cows in here. We have two pull-through silage bunkers, and then this, I believe, is also going to be a silage bunker. Yeah, this is just going to be an on-the-ground bunker. And then we have, this is going to be our milk trigger for that shed. So I'll be honest, I don't really know what that is. And we have another cow barn. 80 cows in here. We have our milk. That's going to be slurry for another building. We have a food and straw trough there. And we have another cow building with our food trough. No workshop trigger like this stuff. This stuff is going to remain if you try to sell this building. Sixty cows for here. Then our milk point. And just some general storage. To the north, we have a cow and BGA farm. It's going to be a farmland ID 253. So we have a farmhouse without a sleep trigger. We've got a few animal buildings here, liquid slurry storage. Then here we have the pumps and hoses biogas plant. Three pull-through bunkers and some vehicle and implement storage. Thirty-five cows in here. We're gonna have our milk point. No. So we have slurry point. Food trough. We've seen this building before. 60 cows in here. Milk. And our food trough. This is going to be storage. We have a pull through bunker. We have that liquid manure silo. More cow drop off. We have our milk trigger also over here. Food trough, I keep thinking that's the door. Three pull-through bunkers. And then here we have the BGA for this farm. With our fermenter, our digesters, our storage tanks. Uh, 
as we round our way across the north. Now we're coming around to another cow farm. Now this one has is kind of separated by a field. So we have a silage bunker here, silage bunker here. It's two, three, four, five silage bunkers. Then we are separated by the field. Then we have a large cow farm here. skipped buying that one so we have our slurry point we have our food and straw here we have our milk and our cow drop off 200 cows slurry cow point 140 cows Then we have the milk there. And we have seen this building. Another 60 cows in here. Milk. And then obviously our food. We have a manure pit. And then two more silage bunkers. We've got now a biogas plant located below. There we have our pumps and hoses, fermenter, our digesters. And then this facility is actually going to make the separated manure that we can't sell, but we will be able to put that on our fields. So there's at least one thing we can do with that. We've got a three sided bunker. Two pull through bunkers here. And then we have another cow and a BGA farm located here. So we have a fermenter, a digester, or so liquid fertilizer storage, not fertilizer, liquid slurry storage, digestate storage, three pull through bunkers, several cow buildings here, 200 additional cows. I mean, this map is cow heavy. Bovine Paradise. We got our slurry in our food. Straw in our food. Our slurry's right there. And our milk's on the other side. Slurry, food, milk, and cow point. Another 80 there. Just got some general implement storage. Sheds, bale sheds. Another silage bunker. There, there, and there. Our animal dealer is located just here beside field 123. So the trigger is kind of removed from the trigger at the trigger location. And then our vehicle shop, which is a little confusing. You see the icon in there? Well, you think to yourself, oh, okay, I just walk up to the door and open it, right? No. There is no trigger to open this door. I've tried to find it. It's not here. I thought, oh, well, maybe we go in here. Nope. There's also no dealer maintenance trigger. The only way I have figured out to get into there is to click on the hotspot. And if we click on the hotspot, we are now inside. We can now use the dealer trigger to buy something. But we cannot get out now because, again, there is no trigger to open these doors. So, I don't know what the deal with that is. I've got to fathom that this map is going to get an update. 
to clearly correct this issue. And hopefully we're going to see the map get updated to correct some of these other issues. So let's run down our score while we are just having fun driving around. Kind of taking a little of the roads. The roads aren't overly wide, so that is something to pay attention. So these do not have collisions, guardrails. I would expect defenses do. So that is something to be paying attention to with respect to trying to get around here with large machinery. We're going to give the map a full point with production built in or areas set aside for such because we have 16 different production items. Now, the vast majority of those are the pumps and hoses DLC components, but we do have 16 nonetheless. With two grain mills and a dairy as well. Speaking of the two grain mills and the dairy, sadly, with respect to the ability to sell all of our base name props, production items, and animal outputs, the answer is no on a lot of those things. In fact, we're only going to be giving the map a half a point because of the sheer number of things that we cannot sell. We can only sell sugar as far as the production, even though we do have a grain mill, it would be nice to sell flour. And we have the dairy, so it would be nice to sell, well, you know, cheese, butter, and chocolate. Can the farms be customizable? The farms can sell lots of your buildings, but there's going to be a lot of residual deco elements that are going to remain. And to that extent, we're going to give the map, again, just a half a point with respect to the ability to customize the farms. I said I'd try to sell all the stuff at all the farms, and I was running into difficulty with a lot of the deco elements. Oh, it looks like these fences don't have collisions. So other than the trees, I think you might be good running around here with larger, larger machinery. Buildings where appropriate are using the new texture technique. We'll give them a full point there. And we have a boatload, an absolute plethora of ground textures. Now we're not going to paint them, but I do just want to kind of scroll through this list. Lots of kind of pavers and such. But I have to say, this might be the first map I've run into that has no paintable plants or trees. Just a whole bunch of paintable ground textures. So you're not putting any any foliage down, that's for sure. Nor are you putting any additional trees down. Trigger and interactive areas being clearly marked. I'm a little torn on this one because of that shop trigger. I found nowhere at the shop to do anything. So I'm not even sure why that's even there because I can't go into it. Of course, you can buy things at any point in time, right? By going to the vehicle shop, you don't have to go to the shop, but some players like to role play that way. And this is gonna leave them in a bit of a lurch. So I feel like giving them map a half a point there as well because I feel that's pretty grievous to have a shop trigger that you can't get to and the fact that we don't have a maintenance trigger at all. The other thing that's really confuses me is this building right here. It's not on viable land. First off, I'm trying to figure out where I am. Here I am. This is not on viable land. But it looks like a great building to be kind of a uh, a contractor yard. I think this map would be awesome on multiplayer with the number of, of farms that there are and the number of fields that we've got going on. But I just feel that it's missing so much with respect to the crops that we can't sell because we can't grow them. Now, we didn't necessarily take any points off for that, but we took a heck of a lot of points off for not being able to sell pretty much every production item that is included in the game. So we're going to wrap this video up by giving this map a score of three and a half out of five. I think it could get an update and I think it could do a lot better than three and a half out of five by cleaning up what is residual at the farms, by adding the ability to sell all the base game production items, especially the items that we can produce on our own. 
and by cleaning up the little issue down at the shop. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below with what you think of Offlum 22. And are you going to give it a go? Do you own pumps and hoses? And what do you think about a map requiring a paid DLC? And until next time, happy farming.